The last few days were fun, because when you don't need to care about the XP or objectives for the cards you don't need, it makes this game way more enjoyable, and this is how this game should be. Hello YouTube and welcome to episode 15 of Road to 99 or RTG series in NHL 25. From the moment I completed the XP path, all I'm doing is playing rivals, and oh my god, how I miss to use my actual team I grind for every single day. So before the new event dropped on Friday, EA released a free 84 overall choice pack in the store as a part of their Four Nations Face of Tournament next year, and I was excited until I see the art of the pack and an actual card art, because unfortunately it's the same as the just weekly moments or objectives cards. Like come on EA, you could at least try and put some card art. Also, the player choices were too poor, and at this point I doubt any card is actually usable. Considering it's a BND, you cannot even put it in the set. So unfortunately it will sit in my collection until they will release a Panther's Objectives, because I picked Matthew Kachuk. I also managed to upgrade my Crosby all the way to the 86 just before the event end. And to be honest, I didn't even notice a difference between 85 and 86. After using Jack Eichel for a little while, I can actually say it's 100% worth the grind. You probably would notice him even more if you would get him sooner, but even at this point, at 87 overall, he is phenomenal. Because in 44 games I played with him and all of them were online, he have 17 goals and 19 assists. It was definitely a very long grind, but I'm just happy it turned out very well for me. So now let's head over to the new content from Friday Next Gen with some interesting player choices. We have Ascaro, we also have Will Smith, basically this is what I already said on my breakdown video, this is like a Sharks event, and of course we also have Michiko and we have Caprizo. Caprizo looks really good and I probably would like to have him, but because we still have 26 days to make choice, there is really no rush to actually pick one player, you can come back and make any player you want for the next 26 days. If there is one player I really would like from week 1, it would be Kirill Caprizo, but his cost is just way too much, at least if you are no money spent. So probably I will end up making Matvey Michiko, because I heard only good reviews. Some people obviously are saying he's bad, but every card is subjective. If I have to look at every other card, they are all small, even including Michiko, but I just think that the cards still will play the best out of them, and I really believe that if he will not win the Calder, at least he will be the finalist, so he's card will go all the way up to the 96. In overall, all these players are really small, and with 80 endurance, it's just like, we're not gonna cut it, in all honesty. But if we are looking like, I don't know, in the future, who potentially could go up, who potentially could get to the 99 or 96, I just think Michiko would be the choice. Also, we need some cards to, like, grind those objectives, so probably by the end of the week, I will get Matvey Michiko with my team. We also have the wildcard grind this week, and for a change, they gave us a mascot one, so we'll be a different one for sure. I had to add Jack Eichel to have some real players this week, week as well, but in general I had loads of fun and probably played my best games this week as I was just winning and winning, until last few games where all I did was lost one after another. Once we reached level 15, it said we got one random 83 next gen card, when in the wildcard path and in my unopened packs it says an 84, so not sure what EA is doing there again. And now when we are done with all the boring stuff, let's talk about the champs. I have so many people DMing me or even talking on Discord about how difficult this week is. Obviously, first of all, EA gave us an actual card worth grinding, so everyone who was not playing the champs was actually going and playing, but something is definitely wrong with the champs matchmaking. People, for example, who were 3 and 6 were matching players who are 13 and 2, so how is that making sense? I understand how the matchmaking works and the more you lose, the easier games you will get, but I don't think that was the case this weekend. Let me know down in the comment sections below, what was your experience from the, this week's champs? Did you face any players you believe you shouldn't be facing? And in general, did you get yourself 10 wins? After last week, I was pretty sure I will take a break from hot champs and just focus on rivals to improve my gameplay experience in general, because I was in such a huge slump, then I couldn't win a game, I was getting frustrated, and in general was very close of deleting the game. Just stop lying to yourself. But you know what? We don't have any self-control, so we did play enough rivals to qualify for the champs, and of course we went and played all 20 games. I had a very decent start for me, to be honest, because I managed to win 5 out of 10 games I played. And all I changed this week was that I did the same thing everyone else does. Went for one-timers all the time, so it made my opponents rage quit. I know this is not the right way of playing the game, but because EA is not patching it and it's in the game, you know what? I need wins. I really need wins, so I will go and do it. So if it continues at the same pace, we may actually get some decent champs run for a Division 4 player. But of course, Course, it has to be a roller coaster of emotions this week once again. When I played my game 18, I matched against someone who was playing very well, but nothing was going his way, so I just kept scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring until we ended up with 13 goals and win number 9. In game 19, I have to rage quit because I just decided that you know what, it's not worth my time. I matched against someone who scored around 5 goals in the first 5 minutes, and I understood, you know what, he's way out of my league. And now we are down to last game. Can I get my win number 10? My opponent scored two early goals, and I was thinking, you know what, another 
week with nine wins. And in general, nine wins are really good for me because I'm a Division 4 player, I'm really struggling and I could not figure out my game. But you know what? We have to play till the end. So I managed to get back two goals late in the third. So we went into the OT and silly mistake from him on the blue line and Makar just have to deliver it on a breakaway. So we did it, boys and girls. First time this year, we managed to get our 10 wins and get ourselves one of the best centers in a game. 85 overall, Joe Nivendai, who will be the great addition to my team next week. In overall, I'm really happy about all the games and how I played. There was definitely some roller coaster of emotions. I lost a lot of games. I think I have also really bad start. I think I lost my first four games and then I won the next four and then we went four and four, then five and five. And pretty much all I did was lost two, one two. Then I think lost another three in a row and then I won another three. At that point, I even didn't understood like where I stand. I was thinking I probably will get around eight wins because how it was going. But you know what? I managed to get 10 wins and this is the best champs run I had this year. And considering I'm no money spent and I'm in division four, I'm really happy. Also, guys, I know you're giving me a lot of tips about how to improve my gameplay. And yes, maybe when I'm streaming and you're telling me that in the chat, I'm not really like implementing that straight away. But I do go into the practice mode and try some things out. So I did improve my defense massively this week and that really helped. So if you have any tips about the gameplay for casual players, make sure you put them down in the comment sections below as well, because I do read them and I do try to improve my gameplay just so I can get better rewards and better team. So now when I'm done with all the online grind, it's time to go and complete the competitive objectives because I have to play at least four squad battle games to get that last pack. And I know I did say that I will not play any squad battles this week, but you know what? I need the packs and I will go and do it. It's definitely boring and I wish we could just sit behind the net, but you know what? I guess this is just part of the grind this year and the content structure is different, the objectives are different and you just have to do what you have to do. So this is my team. We didn't really add any other players outside of Jack Eichel last episode. So see the kid is now 86. Rob Brindamore is just phenomenal and I don't really want to like take him out from my lineup like ever. Panarin and Tarasenko are also decent and everyone else is pretty much the same. One card I'm really impressed is this Sergei Gonchar. I know he's only at 82 overall, but I can definitely guarantee that this Heat Seeker is the best ability ever created in NHL 25. Any player with the Heat Seeker just shoots the pack and always scores. For a defenseman in 37 games, 11 goals and 11 assists, in my opinion these are very decent stats considering he's only at 82 overall and I didn't really play any squad battles outside of let's say three games to complete my competitive objectives. And of course grinding all weekend for every single thing, we have now 16 packs and of course it will not be an episode where we will not go and open them. We have some hot champs mini pack and premium pack from the last champs run, we also have competitive packs, some bonus packs, random based Chicago Black House player, competitive packs, bonus packs, everything basically earned from the wild card, also this random 84 overall card, which probably will not end up very well, but you know what? I need these cards for my Michiko card I'm planning to make. And then we also have some competitive packs and bonus packs. So I will start with this random Chicago Black House player who probably will be a bronze player, but... Bang! Actually, it's a Seth Jones card. We could put him in our lineup and go and play some squad battles. Oh my god, I don't want to play squad battles, but you know what? Maybe we'll do it. The next thing I want to do is open every single bonus pack I earned so far. They all are terrible, but I just want to see myself if I have any more luck than anyone else. 82 overall, let's go! That definitely was not what I was expecting. I am taking an 82 and 77? What the hell? I was being told all oh, you another 77 and they are all tradable i was being told and the bonus packs are shit trevor van rimsdijk is actually a decent pool yes he definitely is not like the best card but hey it's a tradable 82 and i'm taking it okay let's continue with the bonus packs then did they did anything to the bonus packs why are they so good suddenly bang 71 76 okay 73 brendan point 82 let's go and 75. What the hell is wrong with these bonus packs? Are they actually good? Okay, we get two 82s. Let's see if the bonus packs will continue to be good. 73. 69. 80. Sebastian Costa. Let's go. 78 as well. And an 81. Hey, the bonus packs are worth grinding. What the hell? I'm definitely saying they are not bad. They're better than like the competitive packs. We have one more bonus pack. Hey, every single bonus pack was good for me. I'm definitely taking it. 71? Okay, this one is not good. A lot of jerseys and a lot of other stuff. Come on. Okay, another 82. Every single bonus pack had an 82 card. 76? Some jerseys? Give me a NHL jersey, please. Nope. But every single bonus pack had an 82 overall player. Hey, you cannot really complain about that. The next packs I'm going to open will be these random next gen. So let's start with an 81. Again, these cards will just basically help me to complete the objectives. And it is 
Simon Edvidson, actually the card I really wanted. He, I think, goes for around 40k as well. So considering I need to score goals on a blue line, Simon Edvinson will be a good one. And now let's see who are we getting at that random 84 overall. Please, be someone usable. Bang! Okay, Leo Carlson, not the one I really wanted, but I can use him in my first line if I decide to grind some squad battles for the objectives. Now let's do all the wild cards, random 70 plus. Come on. We had some decent pools today. Okay, maybe not today. Anyone else in the random 70 plus? Just don't give me a 70 plus, please. Bang! 74, Zach Jones. And the last one? These packs actually are not worth this week. Another one? 75, at least 75s. I really hope that maybe by the end of next week we can finally finish that second X Factor Captain. I don't want to spend a lot of my coins because I'm starting different YouTube series and I, in general I just want to keep my coins in case they release a player I really want to buy. So now let's do these hot champs packs and then we'll do every single competitive pack. 71 plus player. Give me uh, 75 at least. Okay, Moritz Sider 82, what the hell? How many 82s are we pulling today? Also Brandon Mantur. Not bad. And now we have a premium pack, 76 plus player. Come on, give me another 82 at least. Bang, 77. 76. This is the card I really wanted to try out. Let's go. Okay, Jack Ivankovic, and we also have Kiefer Sherwood. I know you really care about the goalies and their size only, but look at his speed, 93 speed and 52 aggression. I will go and try out this guy in a few games just to see if that speed is really noticeable. And of course, we have this card who have a 99 body checking. I don't know how much this card costs, but I probably will sell him. You cannot really use him as a forward and my team is much better, but that 99 body checking should be good. All I can say then, the champs box from last week was actually worth it, so even if I get only only six wins, at least we had some decent pools. Okay, now we are left with all the competitive packs. Let's start with this one. And then we'll go all the way to the mega pack. Bang! 77, 71, and 74. I definitely cannot complain about my pack luck, but I still didn't pull a single 85 overall card. I really would like to pull an 85 overall card. I just don't understand why he hates me so much. 81? Not bad. Another... Why we didn't have a color change here? We have 81 and 80, come on. And a 74. Okay, now we are down to our last two packs. 75, please. Cue me an 85. I would like that. 81, not bad. 75. 79, oh my god, another Seth Jones. This one needs to be sold. 77 and 71. Oh, I like that we are getting a color change, but... I just want like a good pool, like a pool I can actually add to my team. So far we are pulling cards we can sell and make a lot of coins, or we are pulling a lot of fodder to use to make an MSP. I just want to pull something good. 8, 75 plus overall players. Come on, Mega Pack, don't let me down, please. Bang! 76. 76. What the hell? 76. I don't like this pack. 77. 80. I don't like this pack at all. 78. This pack stinks. And an 82. Okay, Susanna Tapani at least. She's actually a usable card, but my team just don't have any spot for her. And with PWHL coming to the game, there probably will be much better female cards released. I have a really tough choice to make. Do I go and sell every single card we pulled today and just see how much coins I can make? Or I leave every single 75 or 77 or 78 tradable card and just put them all in for the next factor? I don't know. I'm hoping that they're gonna release another X Factor pack. Maybe I will be lucky. But at the same time, I only need four X Factor cards to make my second captain and there is a big possibility that I could pull a duplicate X Factor and I don't really want to waste my coins. So again, help me out chat. Like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sell the cards, make more coins and buy a player or just put them all in in the set? I'm actually surprised this card is so cheap. Only 32k. So probably we'll just go and sell him. There is really no any need for me. Maybe I will add him to my next Budget Beast video on Sunday just to try him out and then I will sell him. I don't know. There are a lot of like choices I have to make, but I'm just happy that I have so many cards I can actually now sell or use to make any of the cards because at this point I have around 500 cards already in 
my collection. 150 of them are tradable, including the bronze players. Of course, I need to get rid of them, but we are starting to build up the collection. Okay, guys, that's it for today's video. We had a lot of packs we opened. We also had some decent pools. Maybe not the pools I can add to my team, but at least something sellable. We also have the best champs run so far this year, and probably once the Nivendai card will be available, we will put some gameplay in as well. So keep an eye out on that. As always, thanks for watching today's video. Have a good one and see you on the ice.